Hi everyone, welcome to another session of valuing and analyzing companies. In today's session, I will be evaluating the firm and equity value of Tyson Food, its intrinsic value to be specific from my point of view. This is not a buy or sell recommendation. You need to do your own due diligence. This is solely my point of view about this business. Tyson Food is one of the major food producers in the United States. They also have footprints internationally in China, Malaysia, and expanding further in other countries. It was founded around 1935 by John W. Tyson, his grandson, John H. Tyson, is the current chairman, used to be the CEO of between 2000 to 2006, and currently Donnie King is the CEO of this company. It is essentially a family-owned business. They are the major holders, 2.3% are all the insider holdings. Majority of it is coming from Donnie King and uh, Tyson family. If you see the John H. Tyson has about 3.8 million shares and Donnie King has about 321,000. Um, so significant holdings by insiders. I tend to think they're going to be disciplined with their own money. They have a his significant, huge skin in the game to keep their eyes on the store, uh, which is going to keep agency costs away from the business. It's going to have well-structured corporate governance. There are a few anecdotes in this business, like John R. Tyson being the current CFO. I'll get into it. But overall, I tend to think if someone is having you know, a majority of their net worth within the business, they're going to be a discipline how they're going to spend money or you know create value for their for shareholders including themselves with that said let's look at the business itself some of their some of their financials historically and uh come to some conclusion or estimates uh or where the business should be trading for the unlevered beta of the food industry business is something around 0.5 uh it's kind of makes sense you know if we go through recession, anything happens, nobody's going to, you know, cut from eating food and putting food on the table, uh, especially, you know, even, you may even cut restaurants, but you may not, you know, cut groceries. So it makes sense that, you know, food producers are having low beta business. The equity value based on the books, excluding Goodwill, is about 9.2 .9 billion. And you see this trend that overall, over the past uh, years, they've been creating value for shareholders. The quick ratio and long-term ratio adjusting for Goodwill, again, is a 1.75 and 1.54, respectively, which is, again, the company is solvent. The debt to equity ratio is about 38%. If we get an expansion market cap, this number is going to go down. That's what I would expect. And so th this business is not hugely leveraged from my point of view. Looking backward on how much interest they paid on these debts, about 4% based on the last financial records we have. Uh, the total debt is $8 billion. The total cash is $650 million. And the interest coverage ratio is about 9 And historically, this number has never came below 6 which is pretty much the you know the critical point where Moody's and S&P and all the other um, supposed agency um, rating firms that are support keeping their eyes on your uh, financials are gonna you know uh, put you on below investment grade or so. And Tyson has historically kept this number above six, which is which is very good. Looking at this, the only thing uh, would worries me a little bit is like the cash they've been carrying is so little relative to the debts. Uh, you know, over here, when they had less debt, they were carrying pretty much among the same amount of cash, but now they have a lot more debt, but they're not carrying relatively more cash. But, you know, again, they're having a cash cow uh, operations literally as they uh, slaughter the meat, you know, and sell it. So, uh, and their cash flow positives, it's, it, it is okay uh, to a good degree. This is the very most important chart. Operating margin is about 6.3% according to trading 12 months number. And if you look at the last quarter, it's about 3%. Historically, this number has been around 7%, 7.5%. Post 2016, before then, it was numbers about four percent. So we see this huge drop in operating margin. That's due to agriculture prices, cattle prices going up. Uh, their cost of doing business is going up. Uh, inflation is being another story here. Uh, consumer spending 
you know, weakening. So there are all these parameters uh, that is, you know, pushing this number to 3.5 as we see it. But if you tend to think that things will revert to to their long-term average, uh, we call this phenomenon mean reversion. I personally tend to think this phenomenon is going to kick in uh, in the next couple of years. And we're going to see expansion in margin relative to it, to the points that we are observing right now. Whether you want to look at it from 13, 12 months, which is about 6%, 6.3, or the last quarter, which is 3.5, then to think this number is going to get back to about 6.6% or 6.5 to 7%. You're going to get costs under control. They're investing a lot on automations. They're also getting their SGNA under control. I think they announced about 10 to 15 percent of uh, layoffs in in the firms. So I think the management is still on the right track, and we will see that expansion margin pretty soon in the next couple of years or so, or even less than that. Looking at the operating margin, this company is about average, maybe a slightly above average. Their sales to capital ratio is above average. It means they seems like they're generating more revenue relative to the assets they have in place. The return on invested capital has been about eight nine percent, uh, which is pretty good relative to, to their you know estimated cost of capital, which should be about you know, five six percent. Return on an equity was about thirteen fourteen percent, which is pretty good. So this company has a good history of return on investment uh, for the firm, return on uh, equity for the shareholders, uh, high sales to capital ratio, uh, high insider ownership. You know, it's, it's, it is it is well run. There are stories out there about John R. Tyson, the current CFO. Uh, I think he was found drunk in some random individual's house in, 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 her, in, in, in her bed in like middle of the night. This guy is the son of the John H. Tyson, you know, the previous CEOs, which is the chairman. My understanding is he's an expensive intern that is being forced up on shareholders. Um, a guy who was born in 1991, um, less than 32 uh, years old, being the chief financial officer of a publicly trading firm, which has 50, more than 50 billion in revenue with four or five years professional experience. Um, you know, this hasn't, his position has nothing to do with his competence. You look at, you know, look, go and look at the first top 1,000 company in the United States, look at their uh, CFO and see what's the average age. I bet it's going to be about 50. But this guy, you know, happened to be less than 32 and being a CFO. Uh, it's he he doesn't have the competency and the necessary experience of capital allocation, but just being part of the family is placed in there and it's being forced upon shareholder. However, at the same time, uh, given his dad John H. Tons Tyson having significant ownership in the business and Donna King, I think they're keeping him in check, and I'm not concerned about you know this guy being the CFO and then another day being found in Bahamas or I don't know, God knows where, going missing or the cash of, of, of the business going missing, stuff like that. John H. Tyson didn't have significant ownership. Yeah, I would have been worried about this. This is ex extremely red, red flag. But this is not the case that I will be concerned about as a shareholder. The bottom line is John Tyson is in the driving seat and is leading the company moving forward. He, he's essentially you know, keeping his eyes on the firm. So with that said, I have uh, performed a DCF valuation, which uh, I'm not going to bore you going through line by line with the models. And the, the, by the way, the model is going to be in the description of this video. If you want to go ahead and run the model, change the inputs, um, you know, come up with your own valuation of this firm or any other firm, you're more than welcome to do so. My estimates of valuing Tyson Food is pretty uh, conservative here. I'm thinking analyst estimates for the next um, you know, year, two, and three are positive. I am going to start with a negative 2% and you know, from returning 12 months revenue. Over the next three years, I'm gradually changing, increasing that from negative 2 to 3, and then increasing it to 4.5, and then decreasing it to 1.5 over the next three years after that. And then 2%, and then I'm going to value the company as a going concern um, with 3.6% uh, as my terminal growth rate, uh, which is about which is in line with 10-year uh, T-bond rate. Now, why am I giving them growth? Well, they acquired uh, William Sausage Company 
Um, they also expanding internationally. So there's some organic and inorganic growth that is going to happening. And that's what they also uh, mention in their earnings calls that they are looking at, you know, grow, growing their footprint internationally and being disciplined with their m and uh, So that makes sense. You know, I'm, you know, over the next 10 years, I'm, you know, taking their revenue from 52 to 66. And I think these are very conservative numbers. And they also have to reinvest for the business. Growth is not free gimmick. For every dollar they are going to bring as revenue, they have to put $1.7 back into the business. And I'm gradually lowering that in, that number to 1.3 to, the, to their long-term average. I am estimating the current operating margin. I call it current because it's going to be next year. These are all next year numbers. So think of it as um, May 2024 numbers or June 2024 numbers. The current operating margin is going to be about 4%. And I'm gradually over the next 10 years bringing it back to 6%. And we saw it was around 7%, 6.5%. So I'm bringing it back to 6 And I am you know, giving them a slight edge. The return on invested capital is going to be 40 basis points above their cost of capital. That's all I am uh, assuming in based on you know what we've seen in the history and that you know high insider ownership. I'm giving that credit which is not significant. I do this, get my cumulative cost of capital, get my cash flow discounting back. The value of operating asset comes to about 33 billion. You add cash, the firm value comes about to 34.89. You subtract debt, then I'm left with the intrinsic equity value in the business, which is 20 6 billion, 26.54, and the current equity value in the business is about 22 billion. So I found it about 20% underpriced. Again, similar to every other valuation I've done in the past in this channel, I am dealing with a lot of uncertainty around all of these estimates. No one has crystal ball, neither do I. And the way I deal with this uncertainty is Monte Carlo simulation. I come up with a different reasonable range for every estimate that went to the model, such as you know, the operating margin. I don't know if it's going to be 3.5, 3.6, 3.7, 4, 4.2 next year. I don't know. And I don't, I bet even Donny King, John Tyson, no one knows over there. I randomly draw a number between 3.5 and 5 and gradually, you know, converge it to a number between 5.3 or 7.7. .7. That's the term. I draw 15,000 samples from different distribution and run a DCF, discount them back, do the firm valuation, equity valuation, and so on, to come up with this histogram. This is going to tell me what's the reasonable range for this business. The intrinsic equity value of Tyson Food should be somewhere, you know, the lowest estimate. I shouldn't say lowest. It's the uh, 15th percentile, which I see reasonable low, is about 21 billion, and 85th percentile is going to be 31, 32 million. So this is the range that I should see the stock trading for. And 26 perhaps should be the fair number. And I find the stock to be trading around its 15th percentile of intrinsic valuation. If you look at this correlation chart, the number that has the highest correlation with the intrinsic equity value is the terminal operating margin. So that number that I picked between 5.3 to 7 point something, what was it? Uh, 5.3 to 7.7, .7, that is actually driving this valuation essentially. So the higher that number is, the higher the valuation, the lower that number is, the lower the valuation. But again, with all of this uncertain, dealing with this uncertainties with uh, this Monte Carlo simulation, you know, 20 billion falls under my uh, 15th percentile. And I feel extremely comfortable to have it in a diversified portfolio. I've been watching this since November. I, you know, reading articles about them, listen to a couple of earning calls, and I tend to think there's nothing wrong um, in a material way to, you know, have this company traded at this significant discount. Uh, if you know anything that I haven't catched, please leave them in the comment section below. Uh, but with that said, I conclude my analysis on Tyson food. Thank you very much for listening and learning about Tyson food with me. And I see you in the next video.